my name is Jade and today we will be talking about Midwinter Blood by Marcus Suzak. You know those moments when you open your book and you can't find your notes and you're about to film and you're like, well, where are my notes? And I can't do it without my notes. I, I can't remember what happened and my feelings and I want my notes. And then you'll look for your notes on the shelf where the book is and they're not there. And then you're like, ah! No. And so you just, you look online for some reason, you try and remember what happened and what you felt at every exact moment and nothing's working and you start freaking out because you spent all this time setting up for the video, you did your hair and your makeup and, and you sorted out lighting and tripod and stuff and just nothing will work. And so then you start like thinking, well, they must have fallen out of the book. Because I, I remember making the notes. So then you like start taking books off your shelf and like thinking, well, where was the book last? Where was it originally? And then you remember it was originally, and you take a book off, you see a little bit of paper, and you're like, <gasps> and you take it out, and it's one of the sheets, and then you just you throw the rest of the books off the shelf, you have the notes, and everything is fine, and you just want to cry because you spent the last hour looking for them, and they just run away from you. And now you have a big mess to clean up. So, that's how my morning went. I don't know about you. Midwinter Blood is i don't know how i would describe it it's about this island and there's this whole mystery on this island like, you read the first part and you'll be like okay things are kind of weird like what's up and then the more you read the more you find out about this island and the mystery behind it it's kind of one of those where you know it's made of like multiple stories and then they'll kind of link together it was very interesting like that's my favorite thing about this it was so different and unique and it kind of had this really creepy mystery thriller type vibe to it which i really liked the tone of it was super cool everyone praises marcus suzak's writing style i feel it was okay i couldn't really find anything spectacular about it the big thing for me was like the atmosphere and the imagination he put into this and how different and cool it was i read it really quick it's a super easy read i wouldn't say i'm in love with it or anything like there are so there is so much praise for this it was okay, I liked it. I would say it'd be a good one to read for Halloween. If you like mysteries, you'll probably like this. I've heard it being described as like a cloud atlas for teens. Yeah, I would give it like a seven out of 10. I liked it, it was interesting. Oh, the cover. I like it in theory, but I'd like it even more if it was like a drawing type style, you know, like pencil, <laughs> like a pencil type, you know, drawing with like obviously color colouring pencils too can be included in said drawing but like the woman is like a real woman I don't like that it could be like beautiful and creepy and like art kind of has a theme within the novel as well that is what they should have done part love story, part mystery, part horror that is love is a big theme in this as well uh, romantic, tragic, horrifying and transcendental <coughs> haunting, sophisticated and ultimately exquisite I don't know if I agree with you, but sure. Yeah. I think that's all I'm going to say for the non spoiler section. If you've yet to read Midwinter Blood, I would recommend it if it sounds like your thing. If you like mystery or if you like supernatural-esque, creepy type, cult type, like weird type things. I like those kind of things and so it kind of appeases me in that sense. I mean, it's not that great in terms of those levels. But it's definitely weird. If you sound like you like it, I recommend picking it up. It's really easy to read. It makes you think a lot. If you've yet to read Mid Winter Blood, I advise you to leave, otherwise I will spoil you and tell you everything that happens. So please go leave read the book before continuing watching. Okay, so first of all, part one is like in the future, so it's two, like 2073. He had that thing, what's that thing called? One Degree App. It sounded really weird. We found out that it's not working and then like it's always worked. Like this thing has been programmed to always work. And so that's immediately like something's gonna go wrong. He's gonna be stuck on this island. It's all gonna go to hell. My initial reaction having read part one was I, I, I excuse me. <laughs> what? What? What have I gotten myself into? So many theories going around my head. And I think most of them were right, which is kind of one of the disappointing things because it was kind of predictable. I would have liked it to, like some kind of plot twist or something maybe. Mm. My initial impression was like is this some kind of like cult? Do they just like kidnap people when they come to this weird blessed blessed island? It felt really like weird and I uncomfortable and creepy. They kept drugging him and it took so long for that to be announced and be a thing but it was so obvious they were drugging him and just like 
wake up and smell the damn roses. He found the stone table that was on the cover. And so immediately I thought like sacrificing type table, what is this? Your name really talks about how she's lived this life before or we or that becomes a thing at some point. We suspect that she's lived this life before. Immediately like, okay, so is this some kind of reincarnation ordeal? Is this destiny? It must have some kind of like destiny type line going through it. They're, they were supposed to be here. Both of them were supposed to be here at this exact time. The, the island was just so weird. There was like no technology. There was like barely anyone around. There's never any new people. There's like the weird flowers. I can't remember what they were called, but they sounded cool. There was some kind of like dragon flower or something, weren't they? All right. He wasn't allowed to go on the other side of the island where these flowers were. It was just all very strange. And it was so obvious that they were keeping some kind of big secret. I feel like magic was like a, another viable explanation. Like I can pretty sure I can figure out the small pieces of it, but why? What is this? What is the, the overlying theme here? And so they... <sighs> His wide terror staring eyes have time to see Tor draw a massive curved knife from somewhere. He hands it to Henrik who steps forward. In another corner of his tunneling vision he sees a face he knows. A face he's known for always. Meridi looks down at him, tilting her head. She whispers to him, I followed you. Eric screams, and though his mind has largely stopped working already, a final thought bleeds into it. Following on from so very many strange thoughts, I, thinks Eric Seven, have lived this before. Right. So that didn't help in any way, shape or form. Eric says that he's not quite the last. He says I'm not quite the last, which makes us think that the last is soon to come. So maybe the next one will be last, which frustrates me because I wonder if we're gonna find out why part one was the last one and what part one achieved. He hit his head and I feel like that's what gave him this knowledge of like what's going on, this reincarnation type ordeal. It must be reincarnation because there keeps being these Murley, Murley and Eric's. Well, so it seems. It was a mother-son relationship this time, which was interesting and slightly strange. It makes me think, will they keep popping up in various different forms of relationships? Those two are forever doomed to like keep meeting again, it would seem. It's weird as well, because they're not, they're the same person. They have the same names, but they're not the same people. Eric, that was born in 2073, didn't mean for that to happen. He had his own life. It's kind of depressing when you think about it that way. To keep just being sucked into these parallel lives. We have the hairs again, so that seems to be a recurring thing that's going to keep showing up. So is it the same Eric and Murray as in they have the same souls or is it just that there will always be two people, one Eric, one Murray? Like, why? What is this? And why? Or is there not some weird cult? Okay, this one is not helpful. I was going down a road here, they were reincarnating people, and we're just forever too doomed to be together. This one doesn't fit with my theme, because Merlin never actually goes on the island, does she? So originally I was kind of thinking that these people would like, this weird cult thing live forever, right, in part one. But, I don't think so. I mean, I can't see the evidence for that. I mean, these people just kept, like, reliving and dying. It's weird how it ended up in, with the cult. Confusing! The island has a different name this time right is not blessed i can't remember what it's actually called i'm not sure what to think <laughs> right now oh right no eric is the father right this horrible dude who hates our protagonist david and Murray is david's daughter right so it doesn't they don't quite have a relationship they're kind of connected but not really maybe which got me thinking maybe it's like the whole war thing that got in the way of them being connected but you wouldn't it's destiny i think destiny can get over the war i just it was very strange, it didn't add up like the other ones did. This was cute. Poor from the museum. That cannot be a coincidence. I thought he had too big of a role in the first part to like not pop up again. He popped up again. Of course Eric and Marie end up together. Their relationship in this one was really cute. I liked it a lot. We have the painting is finally explained. It's some kind of like sacrifice and it's supposed to be like equally beautiful and horrible and like everyone was like <sighs> when they saw it. That must have significance and it's kind of almost reminiscent of part one when Eric got sacrificed. Midwinter Blood is the name of the painting. The book's called Midwinter Blood, so we know that's significant. So this whole ordeal, this whole situation they're in can therefore be named Midwinter Blood, which is such a weird 
name as well. It's so cool. We also learn more about the flowers and their weird properties. They sound really cool. I still really like the way they sound. Blessed, it means blood and sacrifice, which kind of tells us everything we need to know about this weird island. It goes back to my original theory of the whole reincarnation relationship. This one was creepy. I liked this one. This ghost story is their story, their original story. The whole hair thing was interesting. So she turned herself into a hair, which is why they keep seeing these hairs and why they're a significant thing. And then we find out that this Laura chick isn't actually Laura. <laughs> okay. I liked that. That was creepy. It was kind of like irrelevant to our actual story, but that was a fun touch. She obviously told this story and it wasn't Eric, it was Erica and so their love was forbidden, which is getting different from what we've been seeing. Very romantic and forbidden and interesting. Ah, I don't understand what is going on. I'm pretty sure it's reincarnation. I'm pretty sure that's it. I don't know what else I can take from this particular part. I don't think it adds anything to the story. So we find out more about Tor. He was a very nice. This one was in first person, which was different. Eric and Merely are brother and sister. Tor's their uncle. He's a vampire, isn't he? What's of the boy? Mother asked. The priest has shaken his head. The gods do not see another, but he'll be king one day, Father cried. That may be, the priest said, but he will be without a totem. That cannot be, Father shouted. I have my raven. My father had his fox. Everyone must have a totem, most of all a king. And then we are told that the priest thought of a long time. He nodded to himself. He looked at the pair of us, wriggling in the wet rug, and spoke. And then you must give him a strong name instead. Give him a name from the old stories, from the sagas. A name of strength, a name of eternity, a name with powerful meaning. You should call him Eric, forever song, the one king, that will be enough to protect him. Not only in this life, but in other lives yet to come. So Tor was like promised these children. I'm wondering if that foreshadows anything, what we can take from that. Because he's the one that wanted Eric dead in part one. While it was very beautiful, this scene, it was told in a very poetic style. Yes, she whispered, I will follow you. And so their journeys begin. Reincarnation, as I said. It doesn't say why this reincarnation happened and like why on this weird island. It's almost anticlimactic because this is what we figured out from part one. We knew this from part one, that there was some kind of cult thing going on. There was some kind of sacrifice thing going on. We knew it was reincarnation of these two people who were bound to be together forever and ever. We go back to part one. Yes, thinks Eric Seven. Our journeys began lifetimes ago. It's nice that the that the full circleness of it. That it's like a flashback almost. A very long flashback. I'll be that. And then no, he dies anyway. The sounds of angry islanders, the blue of the sky, the smell of the sea, and the clover, the knife descending. And their journey begins. So it is. So does this whole thing start again? Are you? The, I, we we went through this whole thing for it only to start again. Are you are you kidding? Are you you're not serious? I must have misinterpreted this because I refuse to believe that is what happened. They are no longer in love. They have become love itself. They were so close to being together. Does this? No, I'm going to interpret it to that they are now together forever. This is it. They won. They win. Happily ever after. Hooray. Goodbye. Yeah, as I said, 7 out of 10, I enjoyed it. The imagery was incredible. It's a little bit frustrating, the actual storyline. I don't know what song I would choose. I feel like Florence the Machine would go really well with the vibes, but I feel like Florence the Machine is too good for this book. Maybe like Born to Die by Lana Dare. I don't know, I'll link something below. Anyway, that is all I have for today. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you have a beautiful morning, afternoon, evening, slash night. My name's Jade. I hope I'll see you again next time. Bye! Why are they different color? Like, this is the lipstick I'm wearing, but I don't know if you can see. If they're coming up as different, I don't. Oh. Jade, I want you to come in. Hello. <sighs>